Okay, it's the end of the session. Lou Dog, Lilo, and I forget which one is which. Nola. Nola. And Willow. And this is Willow. Sit. Sit. Remember, this is a roadmap to success. Remember, anytime you give a treat, the treat should go in the mouth first, make sure the command word after. So sit. Sit. You kind of took it off to the side of your mouth. That was weird. Um, so I really, when I say commands, I really say it twice. I say it once during the command stage and once during the reward stage. So sit to tell the dog what to do. Sit to pay the dog or reward the dog for compliance. Notice I only said it once. The more you say it, the less you mean it. If you repeat a command over and over again, the dog will stop listening for it. And what you're doing is training the dog that it's okay not to listen to me because nothing else happens. Uh, also, uh, it's important to understand that good attention and bad attention is pretty much the same thing. A lot of us think when the dog's doing the wrong thing, we're going to correct the dog. And uh, everybody, there we go. Yeah, let's not mess with the camera. Sit. Sit. So I'm paying who's doing what I want. Um, you are already sitting, but you've got plenty of treats. Um, okay, so, um, and if I reward them, if I chastise this, I say, get off. Well, every time that, that Lou Dog hears get off is when he's climbing on top of somebody. The way the dogs went through is through association, repetition, and good timing. So every time he jumps up on me, I say, get off. To him, get off means jump up on top of the human. The opposite of what I'm trying to intend. Uh, intent. This is a, one of the common things that happens to a lot of people. So what we want to do is we want to pet the dogs in concert with what they do. So now right now they both they all want a treat. But if one of them were to SAT, I would start petting them within three seconds and then say the command word, come. That's a, a good, that works just as good. So I didn't ask him to come, her, excuse me. When she did come, I paid her and I marked what the activity was that I was paying her for doing. So uh, this is called passive training. So every time your dog voluntarily does something that you want, a good desirable behavior, pet them within three seconds of it and mark it by saying the command word and just the command word. Most of us talk way too much to our dogs. What a good dog you sat down before I even got a chance to say sit. They hear the first word we say the most. In that situation, I said sat and sit, which are two different words. Now if you speak English, they mean the same thing. If you're learning a foreign language, every new word is new vocabulary. So for your dog, sit and sat are different. So I said, oh, what a good dog, you sat down before I even had a chance to say sit. Well, if you're learning a foreign language and you don't know all the words, your brain will start skipping over words and you'll miss the words you know, just to keep you in the conversation. So the more we say to our dog, the harder it is for them to understand. As humans, we say between 2,000 and 11,000 words every single day. There's three people in the house. We have to 66,000 words the dogs have to listen for. We also don't do them a good job uh, service because we decide to talk to those as they speak English. Come, here, come here, come here, over here, here girl, here boy, dog's name, dog's nickname, whistle, tap my thigh. Now the dog has to listen to 10 command expressions for one command action, sit. And just because you have treats doesn't mean you have to get the treat for that. I could have petted for that, but it's hard for me to do it with holding the rest of the treats in my hand. So, um, all right, so uh, basically for passive training, I call this celebrate. I used to say testify, but it didn't make much sense. Celebrate is better. So if I'm sitting here and one of the dog walks up to me and I'm watching TV and I'm not paying attention and somebody says celebrate, I turn to look at the dog and I would just look at it and I narrate whatever the dog's doing. If the dog's standing, I assume it came to me because most dogs don't have a stand command. So I'd start petting and say come. Whenever possible, pet under the chin, facilitate that nose up and avoid, always avoid reaching over the head. But she had her head in my tree pouch when it's close. Um, all things be equal, they'll pet on the chin. When a dog feels good about itself, his nose is in the air. Facilita petting on the chin facilitates that. You got some wonderful bubbles going on. Uh, all right, so um, let's bring you over here. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Okay, so uh, that's passive training. So if any you see anybody that missed an opportunity to pet the dog for doing it, say celebrate. That person has to immediately stop what they're doing, pet the dog, and say whatever the dog is doing at the time. Sit, lay down, crash, whatever it is. Also, I'd like you to come up with a list of the official command words. Come here, come here, come here, over here. That's a whole bunch of variants. So it's just come or it's here. Or come here. Whatever it is is fine. Just make sure it's consistent. So if you say come here and she sees you and she goes, ah, oh, mom, vocabulary. Mom's like, thank you. Come. 
So it's not an argument. It's not a gotcha. We're doing it respectfully. Yeah. Um, but then the dog, uh, then we come, the dog gets, uh, we are, it helps check us because we won't realize how often we don't passively train our dogs. So um, come up with a list of the official command words and try to make half of them fun command words. Remember, dogs can read facial expressions. If I want my dog to lay down, I say crash. Some of my clients say chill, flop. There's probably like a locomotive mm -hmm. term that we could use or a Spanish term. So we want to come up with stuff that's endearing to the family and resonates with us and hopefully makes people smile and laugh. So uh, for example, if uh, the dog comes up, jumps up and one of the people in the house start petting, the word we're going to say is piston. And that means I stop petting the dog because that's an inside joke between the guardians and they will laugh about that. And it helps us get out of the habit just because our neurons and our neural pathways are, get locked in and something called myelin develops over and we just start doing the same thing over and over again. It helps us when we're learning but it helps, it also makes us stuck in our ways. So basically it takes you guys, it takes 66 days to form a behavior pattern so it's going to take about two or three months to get out of those old behavior patterns. Okay, so uh, let me see. We also talked about, uh, what was since it's kind of an addendum to it or book, bookend to it, uh, petting with a purpose. So let's say he wants some attention from me. So he does want some attention from me. She does. Sit. Sit. So when she jumps up on me, she's telling me what to do. If I pet her, then I'm validating, yes, you are the boss of me, which is a big problem in this house with these dogs. So instead, when this happens, I'm going to say, sit. And I have treats in my hand, so I'm going to And then, look, sit, sit. I didn't do what David wants, so somebody else is getting petted. Now, it's the treats are kind of an overrider. But if, I t if the dog jumps up on me and I pet it for jumping up on me, then I'm rewarding that behavior. Instead, what I do is I give it a counter word and say, sit. If the dog sits within three seconds, I pet it or give the treat or give it my attention. And I say the word sit once. Remember, the treat goes first, say sit after. If you're going to do it with petting, sit. Sit, don't repeat it like that. And then I pet and say sit. I start petting and then I say the word after. Uh, if the dog does not comply within three seconds, guess what? I got 33 other things to do. I would be on my phone right now, but you're watching this from my phone. So I pick up my phone, turn the TV on, read a magazine, newspaper, show the dog, I got other things to do. The world does not revolve around Lilo. I'm sorry. Uh, and then after a while, Lilo's like, man, I thought that she would just be so withdrawn that she can't get, she doesn't get a pet me because I knew what she would pet me anyways. She didn't. Now I'm missing that petting. That makes me more, more motivated the next time to want to get that petting. So um, I have, uh, so, and again, I have high value treats, and this is a close proximity. So, and again, I'm not freaking out about it. We just stop them, we want to break it up. So, um, and they have had some fights over some of those things like that. So a lot of it's due to excitement, but the guardians have recognized the high value items, so they remove those. But now, we also have possession of people, like climbing on top of someone be a way of, of guarding. And we have, uh, yeah, Lou is kind of trying to correct, and he's going after the dog that he knows, and he's trying to correct her, saying, no, I'm not going to let you get back to this dog. Um, and so I'll put these up here and show you I've got nothing left for you to fight over. But they could fight over being over and possessive of me. So this is why we talked about rules, which I'll talk about in a minute. But let's finish with a penny with a purpose. So the dog tells me what to do, nothing happens. But if I tell the dog what to do and it does it, it gets rewarded. Now he's trying to actually do the right thing. He's trying to prevent them and give them some space by moving them away. But we're not, uh, we haven't trained him to want to do this. And sometimes he goes, that takes a little bit too far maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and the guardians want to, you know, and sometimes he's, he kind of thinks he's a little bit of a hall monitor, let's put it that way. So basically for petting with a purpose, let's go ahead and stop that. I'm going to stop that right there. So now I'm not going to pet because that would be rewarding. I'm just going to kind of take the dog away. So that might be, when he does this, again, I'd like you to interpret that as he needs some exercise. Go to the stairs and do a five minutes on the stairs. Not even a five, maybe two minutes on the stairs. Or ask yourself, how long has it been since he had exercise? If it's been a uh, longer than an hour, safe bet he probably needs some exercise. Okay, yeah, yes, you're going to wiggle, Mr. Wiggles. Wiggle, wiggle. Yes, now you're nice and calm. Now I can let you go. There we go. Uh, all right, so uh, for petting with the purpose, if a dog tells you what to do, jumps up on you, nudges you, barks at you, don't pet them. Instead, give them a counter order. Tell them to sit or lie down. If they don't do it, you find something else to do. If they do do it, you pet them under the chin, say sit, and that's all you say. You can say sit once, you can pet as much or as little as you want. At least one pet, otherwise the dog will go back to doing what it was doing and jump up on you. After a while, the dog will figure this out and will start sitting in front of you to prepay for attention. When it does, make sure you pet and reward that dog. Um, so say celebrate if that's the case. And you just pet the dog, sit. That's passive training right there. 
Okay, um, so for petting, the purpose is you want to pet the dog, you tell the dog. So if I want to pet him, purr, sit, sit. So I told her what to do, she did it, and I paid her for doing it. If she didn't, I wouldn't have done it. Um, so after a while, uh, uh, we use the watchword of paycheck or maybe piston. Many means I suspect you're, forget you're forgetting to pet with the purpose. So somebody comes over my petting dog standing, they say pet piston to me, I stop petting, tell the dog to sit. If it does sit, I pet on the chin and say sit. So actually I asked your, uh, the dog to sit before you came in the room and you missed it, but thanks for reminding me because I do forget often. Remember, it's constructive, so don't, be, don't get defensive about it. And even if you did it right, still stop. It gives you an opportunity, another opportunity to practice again, sit. Um, and you can pet anywhere you want, just don't pet over the head. But that's past the training right there. Um, now, uh, and if you want to pet the, uh, or, and, and so, uh, all right, so that's petting with a purpose. The dog tells you what to, pet, what to do, or you want to pet it, you give it a counter order. If it does it, you pet it and, once and say that word. If it doesn't do it, you don't do it. And um, uh, what do you call it? Let's say that I'm petting uh, uh, Lou Dog here, and Lilo comes up, and then I just start petting them both. Well, I'm letting Lilo steal from Lou because I was giving him 100% attention, now he's only getting 50%. So what I typically do is if a dog comes up, let's say she comes up, she wants attention while I'm petting her, she's jealous. So I, I, I continue, I kind of hold her at bay, I'm just kind of blocking her, and I pet her as much as I want. When I get done petting him, if she protested, she doesn't get anything. If she was good, then I would turn and sit, and give her my full attention. She doesn't sit, she doesn't get a pet. Careful. Um, uh, just uh, if we, the camera shakes a little bit, we have, uh, is that Nala? Willow. That's Willow. Uh, Willow is a great, uh, great on the black. Uh, so, uh, but basically if the camera shakes, that's why. Uh, no special effects here. Okay, so we also talked about, uh, these dogs really don't have any rules. Uh, they kind of were getting exercise by playing and roughhousing with one another, which isn't the ideal because they play too, they go too far. Uh, sit, come. So one of the things you want to do is when they're playing, Whenever they pass level five energy, give them an automatic timeout. Even if they're completely happy and there's no problems with it, coming down from nine to one is a lot harder than going from five to one if the range is from one to 10. So every time the dogs pass level five energy, they should get an automatic timeout no matter what. And then that helps them practice calming down. So this way, if there's a fight or something, we can have that. We can help them calm themselves down faster. Now, if there is a fight, in the moment, you gotta do what you gotta do. As soon as you can, however, we want to get those dogs back together and give them a bonded shares experience. So these two got into a fight, separate them. I, I'm doing the video here, so I'm preoccupied, but if I say it was worse than this, I would put them on leashes and I would take them outside and we'd go for a walk together. One on the side, one on the side. I short leash, you can't get to each other. And then I'm just going to use my arms to kind of block here. Um, and so uh, we want them to, the last thing I remember about the other dog was something positive. The last thing I remember, that guy bit me. That's that's what I remember, it's most fresh, and I'm gonna have a resentment or uh, the residual frustration or aggression or whatever it is later on. So that's why when we really tell people when you're training, you should always uh, end on a good one so the dog has a good rem remembrance of it. So that's gonna be an SAT. Oh, so ask for an SAT there. Sit. Sit. Up. And then pat on the chin and say sit. Sit. That was great. Now he has a very, if you can hear a very pronounced sit. Uh, very fast, which is totally fine. Some, a lot of people say sit or come, and the dog comes to the come. <laughs> Dogs hear inflection. So to say it consistently however you say it. So if he always says sit, sit, that's fine. But mom probably says more like sit, sit, and you might say it a little different. That's fine as long as you are consistent in your delivery. Uh, okay, so uh, sit, my delivery. All right, so um, because the dogs didn't have any rules and they were able to demand attention from their guardians, I think they were confused as the leader follower dynamic in the house. So we talked about exercises and creative ways of exercising. Uh, we can throw the treats up and down the stairs, maybe do an empty stomach, and the first time do it with each dog separately and keep on throwing them until they won't come up and down anymore. Uh, when they throw it down the bottom of the stairs, when they go down there, throw up with a word that means south, call it you know Mexico. Give them another word, call it Canada. So now we've kind of put things in context. And for each dog, throw it, the treat up and down until the dog's like, you're crazy. We're down there 40, 14 times, not going down anymore. Then we know what the maximum number is. We want to exercise about 50 to 75% of the maximum number multiple times a day. Um, now, because these two do, these are the big beefers. Mm -hmm. No. The, these two. These two? Mm -hmm. that, are, that are probably. No, Lilo and Nala. Oh, okay. So I would, I would try to uh, walk Nala and, uh, and Lilo 
Lilo or Lila? Lilo. 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 They walk great together. 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 Well, we'll keep doing that. We want to cr create bonded, paired experiences with them together. Um, okay. So, uh, so, the, uh, so uh, exercise is really important. Uh, the stairs is one. Sit. Um, uh, the fetch is another one if the dogs like to fetch. You also, I would recommend getting a snuffle mat or two. Celebrate. Almost the word. Crash, chill. Crash, so you chill. have to come up with a family meeting. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you want to do those vocabulary words so you guys decide. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make sure half of those are funny. Um, so uh, what was I saying right before that? Um, uh, oh, the snuffle mat. So I'd like you get like two snuffle mats. Snuffle mats, you get them on Amazon. Make sure they got a lot of tassel. I saw one that was really half-hearted. But it should be just like, like a crazy shag carpet explosion on a floor mat. And the idea is you hide the, the food in there. The dogs have to move it just right to get their food. So I would basically get two of those. I would also get two Omega Treat Balls. They look like about a softball that kind of looks a little bit like a golf ball on the outside, but they're orange. And you can put their kibble in there, put one in one room, one in another room. They have to nudge it just right to get three pieces of kibble to fall if they lick it up. And when they lick it up, I say soccer when they're doing this. That's the command word I use for that. So after a while, my dog like, nudges this thing around like he's Diego Maradona. And, so, uh, and then the dog gets rewarded. They're earning their food in both situations which really boosts their, uh, it's physically draining, it's confidence building, it's uh, self-esteem. There's, uh, there's a lot of benefits to that. And it gives them something to do. So you can, I would have two um, uh, and switch them. So these, today these guys are using the stuffle mat for breakfast and then those two guys, wherever the other one is, uh, are gonna do it for dinner. Um, do we feed them multiple times a day? No, two times. Twice a day, so yeah, okay. Yeah. So some people only do it once a day and dogs get cranky, uh, so twice a day is best. Um, I forgot to go over this with the guardians, but it's important that we eat. Dogs eat in the order of their rank. So whoever's feeding first should eat that first. The human should eat first. Five bites of a chipper cracker, piece of celery, is fine. When you get done, then prepare their food. And I, uh, you know, so Lilo is the oldest. Mm -hmm. So normally I feed the oldest, unless the, uh, but unless there's other dogs that have better behavior, then I would override that. So uh, now uh, for you guys, because you're gonna do feeding a little different than I normally do, I usually have people do it all in front of the other dogs. I would just take two of them, put them in two different rooms the, with the uh, snuffle mat, get them on Amazon or Chewy, and then I would get two Omega treat balls and those two dogs in the two other rooms. So now there's like, you know, it's gonna take them about 10 minutes to feel them, eat their meal. You can go shower or do whatever you wanna do. But remember for exercise, it's best done every two to four hours. And we don't wanna do it with a full stomach. So I'd get up, let them do their business in the morning, then I would do the exercise, then you go shower, maybe, uh, or, you know, or have, give them about 10 minutes to recover, then feed them. Uh, and we wanna make sure we have enough time to do that. And then you work for, uh, the guardian here works from home, so it's not as big of a deal to have a dog door. Uh, but if you were leaving, you wouldn't wanna load them up and then put them in a kennel. Uh, so good job. And so mm -hmm. she escorted uh, uh, Nala off of the uh, dog bed, uh, off of the couch. Now right there, I would have had mom block when the dog tried to jump up. Now what she did was she kind of gently guided the dog to the edge of the couch and she waited for the dog to feel like it was gonna fall off and then the dog is the one that jumps off the couch and then mom can now pet and say off. Off? Be, just be careful you don't push one dog towards another dog that they have a beef with that can create an issue. Um, okay, so those are just some examples of rules. Also you can Google scent games. That's a great way to burn some energy. Um, next thing I talked about were rules. Dogs really don't have any rules. And he, and he is going to be persistent. So just, but you have to do it right away. If he does it again, do it right away. I would try to even like have my, I wouldn't hold it here, but as soon as he jumps up, I try to jump while he's in the air. So he hits my hand and falls. I don't want our dog to get hurt, but that will almost help them faster. But if we're too gentle or we, I'm not saying be abusive. But we're too soft, we pick them to get an elevator ride, well then I'm not gonna to want to do that. Yeah. So the idea is, know that they want to do it, and be ready as soon as I boom, my arm goes down. Boom, blocks the dog. After a while, five or six or 10 times, I was like, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Now we also talked about, so one of the first rules is not being allowed in the furniture for 30 days, or excuse me, 90, not, uh, six, 90 days, or as long as the problem's still going on. He's gonna to try to do it again, so be ready with your cry. Don't cry chop early. Mm -hmm. Be ready to cry chop. <laughs> no preemptive chopping. Um, there you go. That was great, and, and mom and daughter did it in unison. And so that is a more powerful response. And now the dog's looking up at, oh, oh that just got real in here. Yes, it did, because we don't want you on the couch. I would wait until you get the X mats before you do that one, but uh, the X mats are a great way to uh, uh, preface that. Now, Nala. we have Nala going into Lilo's, uh, Lilo's kennel, and that's definitely something uh, we want to try to avoid. What I would do is just go to the back of the kennel and tilt it upward. There you go. Uh, oh, okay. Um, 
Remember to use a kennel up word. So come up with a fun word for the two dogs going here, for uh, 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 Lou dog to go there and Lilo to get there. So the way to teach that is throw the treat in there with lick it up, call it you know, kennel or uh, Long Beach. It's, you know, he's named name after Lou, uh, or LB. Uh, and so throw the treat in, he licks it up, say LB, let him leave, do that five or 10 times. After I say LB, he'll just run right in there. Uh, okay, so um, uh, so not being allowed on the, uh, the couch, or all these rules should be in place for a minimum of 90 days or as long as the problem's still going on. Rule number one, no furniture. The higher dogs sit, the more rank or status they have. I would also recommend the guardians move the couch a little bit over so the dogs can't just sit on top. And when they do get permission to go back on the furniture, it's with permission from a human and never up here, only here. Don't push your luck, buddy. You're lucky to be up here. Don't you? Push for more, you lose everything. So enjoy what you got. Um, so at that point, after 90 days or as long as the problem's still going on, if there, all the fights would have gone at least 60 days with no fights, probably could start thinking about having the dogs up. And remember, rewarding a dog with breaking a rule is not a good way to reward them. If you want to give the dog access, that's fine. Oh, you did a good job, so you got to break the rule. That's confusing and frustrating. So, uh, pause. So Nala went over there and looked up. Oh, I don't think I'm allowed up here. And she stopped and she's looking at her guardians for attention. Now she's getting ready to, and mom just did a little bit of a quick step and she stops up, but she's ready and they're great. And so that's the thing is really creating a scenario where you are prepared to help guide the dog. Most of us don't actually teach the dog how to behave. We just get mad when they do what we haven't taught them to do. If I want to teach a dog to behave or a certain way, what I do is I recreate the scenario in the easiest version possible. I'm going to do this with one dog at a time. And then I help do first step over and over. Kind of like the video I have above. First step is just reaching for the handle. As soon as you get excited, I pull away. And so I, I keep reaching back and forth until you're seated. It's kind of funny. No, that's okay. Uh, until the dog, he was just kind of uh, uh, got up and was doing a little dancing. Uh, instead of touching the, the table or the uh, uh, camera's on. So um, the idea is to break it down into individual steps and practice the first step over and over the easiest version until the dog's automatically doing that. Then we go to step two. Repeat the process to step three, step four, step five, and eventually the dog knows how to behave. Come for all the steps, and then we make, then we do them all successively, and then we start making the situation more and more progressively difficult, and we work our way back to the real world situation. Now the dog knows not to take food out of a or or dirt plate that's on the dinner on the coffee table because I've been taught that leaving it alone is rewarding. Uh, okay, so um, let me see. Uh, we have other rules, not being allowed in the kitchen while we're preparing food, not being allowed around the dining room table when we're eating food. Uh, if we're eating on the couch, shouldn't be allowed there. Uh, now you can, uh, there you go, so tilt, just tilt it up immediately. Now this could also be a reward for wanting to go in there, so you might close the door after that. You can't see this on camera. Nala just keeps on going into, the, uh, into uh, Stitch's kennel. Um, but if I go in there and then mom gets up and chastises me, then that becomes a reward. So at that point, I would close it and then wait for Lilo to want to go in there. Maybe you teach Lilo to ring a bell to go in the kennel. So you hang a bell next to there. If Lilo nudges it, you go over there and open the door and let Lilo in. If Nala does it, nobody gets up. After a while, Nala will stop doing that. And Lilo now knows how to ask my way to go into the kennel. And we prevent her from going in there. And after about two, three months, she should get out of the habit of doing it unless she's trying to kind of one-up them a little bit. Um, okay, so those are rules. Uh, also, other rules, sit at the door before you let the dog in or out. Say sit once, and if the dog doesn't, there you go. So as soon as he gets up, then go and close the door. You do have to latch it just close it, perfect. All right, so go to the door, say sit once. The dog doesn't sit within three seconds, walk away, sit down nearby, wait one minute, and then go back and command the dog to sit one time, careful. And then uh, if the dog doesn't sit this time, I'll walk away and sit down for two minutes. Next time I'll walk away and sit down for four minutes and then for eight minutes. Make sure you're seated. And keep on doing that. And uh, you can let, uh, what am I going to let her out? Go ahead, That's her. it's just for you. Uh, so the dog is sitting at the door. So uh, as soon as the dog, I tell the dog to sit, and as soon as it does sit, I fly the door open. But let's say there's four dogs. Let's say I go to the door and I say sit, and Nala sits in the other three dogs. Well, I let Nala out and then I close the door. There's a dog door, but it's only open seasonally. Uh, so this way I'm paying based on performance. The dog that did what I wanted gets the reward. The other three dogs don't get anything. So I go to the door, I say sit once. If they sit in three seconds, I open the door. If they don't, I walk away and we double length of time. And eventually the dog will go sit at the door. as is what I'm saying, I like to go out. When you go to the door, the dog gets up, tell it to sit again. When you reach for the handle, it gets up, tell it to stop, pull back and say sit again. When it does, 
Jiggle it. Gets up, pull your arm back, tell it to sit again. Keep on stopping that process until the dog knows that I'm not allowed to, uh, they're not opening the door until I'm completely calm and sitting down the whole time. Um, other one is, uh, let me see, uh, well, I talked about feeding. Um, try not to let the dogs go sit. in or out doors ahead of you. Or, uh, there you go. So now he, he said sit twice. The dog did not sit. And, uh, and then you pet it anyways. So sit once, you don't sit, you're, he's leaning forward. Are we have the guardian lean back? Show him, play him hard to get. You're a handsome guy, I'm sure you've played hard to get with a lot of the ladies. <laughs> Same thing works great right for the dogs. Crash. And Frogger, if both legs are out behind. Um, so I, I call it flop when my dogs are on the side, so you have a different version of lay down. Um, also, one thing with, uh, that I want you to be con uh, cognizant of with a blue dog is he does have a tendency to roll over and give you his belly. Now, if you're petting me and I'm like, oh, this feels good, why don't you go ahead and get the underside? That's okay. But you start petting me, I flip over right away, stop petting. If he's too submissive, he can also be too, yes, uh, too dominant. And so we don't want dominance or submission. And we want you to go off duty. You don't need to be the whole monitor. <laughs> the humans are going to take over those roles. The more the dogs see us acting like role models, the less they feel like they need to police those things themselves. So, um, all right. So let me see. What else do we want to talk about? Um, there we go. And this can be a way of getting attention. Remember, good attention, bad attention, same thing. So perfect. Close the door afterwards. Um, okay, so the video above shows how to let the dogs interact, but look for other ways to delay gratification to help the dogs develop a little bit of self-control. So you want to go there, buddy? That's yours. Go right ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, again, you might want like to get a special chime next to each kennel so you can close them if they're going to each other's kennels. So if they ring the chime and it's their kennel, you go let them in. Anybody else rings the chime? Nah. Uh, okay. Um, I also went over the four escalating consequences, disagree with unwanted actions or behaviors. If you forget those, call or text me. I don't go through those in the videos. Sit. Uh, because you have to hire me for some stuff. Uh, but don't use the kennels anymore for timeouts. Use that leash timeout that I went over with you. Um, and then when you have activities where dogs are excited, separate them. Help them practice by breaking down individual steps one step at a time for until the dog, until you have a dog that does it great. Then do it all the steps together. Once you've taught all the dogs, or somewhat of the ways, and you have two at least that know it, then you bring the two out and practice in a real world situation, and you gradually, you bring eventually being the third best dog once it's reached a level. You can't do it with, with four dogs. It's just, it's too hard to do it all at the same time. Uh, and the x will take care of that problem for you right away. Uh, now that, that I'd pet for a sit. So that's, she's asking, but it's still a sit. So I would still reward that. So, and so, I want to get on the couch, but when I sit, she petted me. It's not what I wanted, but it's something I do enjoy. After a while, I might be willing to concede do that, doing that in exchange for you on the couch. And I also shot some of the guardians how to use, uh, make the dogs go here on command. Throw a treat, dog licks it up, say the word uh, Denver. Um, leave a treat, don't let the dog see you leave it, and don't point it out. When the dog goes over and gets it, say Denver. Remember, after the treat goes in the mouth. Third way, put the dog, bring the dog over here, put it in a sit, sit and then give the dog a treat and say Denver. So there are three ways to entice the dog to go. Then when the dog goes on its own, you pull out a treat and throw it over here. So now when I come here, it rains treats. If you don't have a treat, just say the word sit or uh, Denver. You, if it'd be nice if you can get up and come over and pet them. If you feel like doing it, you don't have to. It's more impactful if you come and pet them than just saying it there. But if you at least say it from there, at least you're saying one thing. So, um, all right, um, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else you want me to go over that we haven't covered? Not that I can think. Okay, so now there probably will be things you'll think of. Please, t uh, the number I called you from, uh, put it in your phone, share it with everybody in the family, and make sure you put down dog gone problems with the company name. You'll forget me in six months. <laughs> uh, that affected all pretty women. But uh, after six months, you know, we search for dog, and I'll come up. I've had people help uh, reach out to me seven years after I've worked with them. I don't remember them. I have to look at my notes, but I can usually share videos of other stuff. Um, I, something else you guys might want to do is go to my website, doggoneproblems.com, click on where it says dog training tips, and type in leave it, two words, and teach the dogs a leave it command. I think there's so no. many things that you guys have going on right there. You could have said leave it instead of no. It's okay. It's a habit. You've been doing it for a long time. But if leave it is, because there's like, uh, who's the possessive of the toys? She is. Yeah. So we could teach her to drop, and I'll talk to, teach you how to do drop right now. But then what we want to do is once she's dropped it, 
put the item in the, in the middle of the floor where everybody has access to it, but you tell everybody to leave it. So now the dog is voluntarily leaving it. Right now, the guardian physically took it from her, put it on the counter, and she went to climb on the counter, so he moved it to a different location. So just moving your, kind of moving things around. What we want to do instead is teach the dog a drop command and then a leave it command. Look up a leave it on my website, do a drop. The dog has something in its mouth. You pull out a high value train treat and you hold it here, in front, if this is the dog's mouth, hold it in front of the dog's nose. Don't give it any commands. They'll all try to take it with the object in their mouth and they'll figure out they can't do that. They'll very cautiously put the thing down away from you. That's why it's helpful not to have other dogs around when you're doing this. As soon as it drops or puts it down, pop the treat in your mouth, say the word drop after it goes in the mouth and then show no interest in the item. Doesn't take very long. If you do this low value items, items, it's easier to do it for the high value items. Shouldn't take you very long. You say drop, and the dog's like, "What you got for me?" <laughs> and that's what we want. Uh, leave it. So drop is is don't take or a drop is give up possession of something. Leave it is do not take possession. So leave it is as the dog's walking towards the item or the trash, you say leave it. Okay, I leave it. And you're gonna give me something else. Cool. The dog comes to you and you give it a treat. And then you gradually start elongating how long that dog has to leave it. And then when you're done with the exercise, you pick up the toy and put it away. You do it when you have time to do it. When you don't have time, don't leave it there because you're going to be preoccupied and that's when mistakes happen. Make sense? All right. Um, okay. Nala. And I forgot this one for some reason already. Willow. Willow. Lilo. And Ludog. And this is their roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it. 